Folks, how we doing? Have an interesting scenario for you today. Let's say you have a, a new homestead. It could be a few acres, maybe up to 40 acres like what we have out here. And you're just starting out. You're on a budget, money's tight. You need one piece of equipment because you have a lot of stuff to do. How do you make the best decision? So we're gonna talk about the three most popular types of equipment out there. You got a, an ATV or a UTV like what we have with our Ranger over there. You got a tractor like the Summit TX25. You got a skid steer like the John Deere 333G. These are just here to have something in the background to kind of represent it. So these models, it's not specifically that. It could be a smaller ATV, it could be an open station, it could be a cab, it could be a smaller skid steer tractor, whatever. Use your imagination. You're gonna have a budget that's gonna come into play as well. And that's gonna be a big factor, but there's a lot of other variables to consider that maybe you haven't thought about before. And so I've been in this position before, you know, I didn't start out with a lot of equipment and it kind of went that way, partly because of my business. I sell attachments for tractors, skid steers, UTVs, all that. But I find myself now actually getting rid of some equipment. I just sold uh, my Manitou, which is a big telehandler. Um, my mini skid steer, that is for sale, pending sale, probably out of here soon too. I'm finding that um, no matter what you decide <laughs> before or after this video, you're probably gonna change something down the road, all right? And, and nothing is forever. Typically, you're gonna have um, circumstances that change, maybe uh, projects that change, and, and whatever else it is. So, you know, you, you, wanna, you wanna simplify and have as few pieces of equipment as you can, but sometimes it does make sense to have a separate one, like I've got a zero turn for mowing, that just makes sense for me with where I'm at right now. Okay, so the big factor, again, is gonna be price, and I think you need to consider the price of the, the machine itself and then the price of the attachments that go along with it to complete all the jobs that you have at hand. And so again, you can go crazy with a, with a Ranger or UTV like this and pay over 30 grand. You certainly don't have to. You can get you know, a regular four-wheeler for, I don't know, these days, maybe, maybe under 10 grand still. I mean, they're still expensive, but they're typically gonna start out as the cheapest price point. And then the next cheapest would be a tractor, most typically, all right? If you get a subcompact tractor with a loader, you know, you're, you're under 20 grand, you know, I mean, it just depends on what brand and what other attachments you get with it, but uh, kind of a relative price point. And then you go to a skid steer and, and a smaller skid steer, hey, hey June, let's not dig a hole, okay? No, we're not digging a hole. No, no thank you. Okay. And so then a skid steer, is gonna be a lot more, hey, a lot more, a lot more than a tractor would be, okay? Sorry, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. But the point is, cheapest, more expensive, most expensive, depending on how you have it configured, a cab, no cab. I've done a whole video on, on cab versus no cab. I mean, it's you're paying a lot of money for something that you're not doing work with, but having a cab, you know, this time of year in the cold and the heat, uh, dust, allergies, uh, bees, all sorts of things, you know, even, even the sun just beating down on you, it lets you get more work done. Um, you can stay out in the field, out in the, in the yard, do whatever you need to a lot longer. Now talking about attachments, attachments for ATV, UTV are cheaper and more expensive. That sounds weird. You can get some, some simple tow behind stuff that can be pretty cheap. You know, we, uh, we advertise for a pull type box blade electrically raising it and lowering it that can go behind um, an ATV that's pretty darn cheap. You can get a front mount, just a simple winch up and down snowplow, pretty cheap, right? But if you wanna get um, a snowblower like what we sell or a, a nice fancy flail mower or a brush hog or even a finish mower for the front from Rami, those are more expensive than getting a brush hog, a finish mower, a snowblower, for a tractor. So anyway, the reason that some of those attachments like the snow blowers, like the brush hogs, whether they're a front mount, you can get pull type um, brush hogs and finish mowers too, but the reason those are more expensive is because you have to add on an extra engine to operate those. So you don't just have the engine on your ATV, UTV, you've got the engine for the attachment as well. And that goes into that cost driving it way up. So a tractor on the backside is gonna use a three point hitch that comes on their standard to raise and lower. And then it's got a rear PTO and a mid PTO oftentimes to operate that brush hog or that snow blower or that belly mower or whatever it is. And so they don't require an extra engine. It's just a lot more uh, simple design. And so those costs typically are cheaper. And so you can get a lot of these attachments cheaper than you can for the UTV. Now on the front side of the tractor, you're gonna have hydraulics for like a grapple. If you wanna open and close a grapple, you can do so there. A skid steer is gonna be entirely hydraulic, okay? so. You got all these hoses right here, like these are side shifting hydraulic forks. Um, if you get a, a, a front mount brush hog on there, again, trying, trying to keep it apples to apples, you have a hydraulic motor that's on here. And so those are just very costly. Uh, hoses and fittings even add up to that too. And hydraulic um, pumps and systems that are on skid steers in general, 
Well, they just drive the cost up to the machine too to operate the equivalent equipment. Now, as far as availability of attachments, if you're looking to buy, there's plenty of stuff out there no matter what machine you're looking to get. If you're thinking, hey, maybe I can get by and just rent when I need to, well, your best bet is to go with the skid steer then because you're gonna have a lot more availability at rental yards to get skid steer attachments than you are ATV, UTV, and tractor attachments. And of course, your specific area, maybe you may be fortunate to have a place to rent out stuff for these two, but most of the time you're gonna have availability for a skid steer. An important one is gonna be accessibility, as in where can these machines go to tackle the jobs that need to be done? And we're on semi-flat land here with some hills, but some of you guys live in mountains uh, just or big steep terrain. Uh, we do have a real wet marshy area over there too um, that's dry sometimes and not dry other times. And so you have different areas that you need to get into. And I will say for hills, you know, our property on the other side of town uh, has some pretty steep hills and I don't, well, let me put it this way. I feel the least safe on those hills in my tractor. I feel the most safe in my skid steer, very wide, low center of gravity, and right behind that, and the UTV, ATV. Again, it's just tractors in general are, are narrow and they're long with a higher center of gravity, kind of where that seat is sitting up, you know? And, and that's why I preach about safety a lot with ballast weight and, and wheel spacers and everything else and, and widening your footprint and lowering that center of gravity if you go with the tractor. But along with that is kind of maneuverability. Say you're in, in the woods too, it's, it's a lot easier, well, it can be a lot, you can, you can zero turn this thing if you want to, to spin around. Um, an ATV is normally pretty easy too. You know, a tractor, well, like my big Kubota over there, for example, that's got less power than this, than this smaller footprint skid steer right here and it's a lot harder to navigate it's it's a lot taller hitting things and wider whacking things this way too and so you can get more power in a skid steer in a smaller package so it's case by case but weigh all that kind of stuff make a priority list make a needs list a, a conditions list whatever it is and go through it and kind of rank each one of them like a, a one, two, three scale and, and see what comes out on top but another example you know we we sunk our skid steer over what I thought was a relatively dry area um, in the summertime, and I had first walked through it, no big deal, just to, I wanted to see if there's any kind of hidden water, standing water in the weeds or wherever else, and there wasn't. Uh, then I drove the four-wheeler through there, that went through just fine, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go right to the skid steer and take that through, and that thing sunk down, and that was a whole debacle. Um, that was a lot of fun just getting that out, you know, but the lighter machines, you know, like, like these two over here, can be a lot better potentially, you know, and you're talking about PSI, that kind of thing too, but um, those handle a lot better in certain scenarios than a heavier skid steer or even a wheeled steer. You know, this is a track steer technically, but uh, a wheeled skid steer, those are, those are brutal. And I would never buy one to have around my homestead just because I have too many wet, mucky conditions where I'm gonna be sitting there spinning my wheels instead of getting work done. And I think an interesting one that um, some of you may not agree with, but I think in, in general would be as far as lifespan goes, you're gonna have shortest lifespan, mediumest lifespan, and longest lifespan right here. And you know, these are typically gas engines in here which just don't last as long as diesel engines do. You can get <clears throat> like the Gator with a diesel engine. I wouldn't recommend that, but it's, it's a possibility. Then you go to a tractor which isn't a commercial grade piece of equipment per se, but does have a diesel engine. You know, they are very simple. Uh, they are durable, they will last. You know, you hear lots of stories of these machines lasting well over 10,000 hours with proper maintenance. Not that you're not gonna um, blow a hose or have to have something rebuilt at some point. Typically, if you bought one of these tractors new for most homeowners, it's gonna outlast the purchaser. On the skid steer though, these are just straight commercial grade construction pieces of equipment. And so they are built very heavy duty, very robust. Um, they're gonna last the longest compared to anything else that you're considering. But because it is to a construction grade level, you are gonna pay a premium for that. Folks, I wanna take just a second to tell you about our channel sponsor, RimGuard. They are a liquid ballast solution. They line up with exactly what we do here on Good Works, which is talking about tractors and tractor safety. We see it as simple as this. If you own a tractor, you need RimGuard. In fact, some tractors include RimGuard as standard out of the factory. Liquid ballast is simply weight, all right? And this weight hides inside your tires. It stays there all the time. It's a safety concern because tractors are almost always too light and too tippy out of the factory. The number one attachment used by every tractor owner is their front end loader. So when you pick up something heavy on the front end, your back end wants to pick up off the ground. RimGuard liquid ballast helps keep your back end planted to the ground. 
But beyond safety, it's gonna help maintain traction because if those rear tires, those power driving tires are on the ground, you have traction to go where you need to. And you're gonna operate more efficiently because if those rear tires aren't on the ground, you're not gonna pick up as much as you need to or take it where you need to go. RimGuard is all natural. That means it's safe. It is the heaviest per gallon, all natural product on the market. It's not gonna freeze, it's not gonna corrode, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. To find a dealer, visit RimGuardSolutions.com to make your tractor safer today. Something that's often overlooked is if you do have the requirement to transport your equipment from point A to point B, going to be the easiest to do so with an ATV, UTV. You need the lightest trailer, probably the shortest trailer to get that done. Going to need something a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, you know, longer, that kind of thing, supporting more weight, potentially a bigger tow vehicle for that too, depending on how big of a tractor you go with. And then of course, with the skid steer, you just keep going up, you know, larger and larger, heavier, maybe not space requirements so much as far as length goes, you know, like on a, on a tractor with a brush hog on the back of it and a loader on the front like this, it's like you're, you're eating up 20 foot pretty darn quick and you don't really want to max out your, your trailer length just with that. You know, you want to have some flexibility to position it correctly and maybe carry some other attachments with you. So, you know, the longest trailer, maybe, maybe the most expensive because of that would be with the tractor, but you know, a skid steer like this, not saying you're going to go this big. This is about 12,000 pounds, give or take another thousand pounds or whatever for forks. And you need a big honking trailer to carry that around. And think about when you're, you're looking at a 14,000 pound GVWR trailer, you got to subtract the weight of the trailer, maybe 4,000 pounds out of that for your carrying capacity. And so that would maybe be like a, a 10,000 pound load that you could put on there maximum. So little tangent there, but think about how that cost is going to affect you. Storage is another consideration. Probably not a whole lot of a difference here. Um, you're going to need a decent amount of space no matter what you have and depends if you want to store your attachments inside or not. You know, and again, if we talk about the trailer example on the tractor where if you're going to leave your brush hog on, you want to store the whole thing in, in a garage stall. Well, that's a solid, you know, 20 feet right there. And you got to think about that. So you can, of course, get by with, with less space on, on these outer two depending on what attachments you have in your setup, but with a little bit of a consideration there too. I mean, they're typically all smaller than like a, a you know, super duty truck. Um, if you guys are using that to haul things around, but a consideration nonetheless. For you folks that are buying in the used market, just to be aware of, ATVs, UTVs in most states are gonna have titles on them. Uh, Wisconsin actually, I don't believe that they title their ATVs and UTVs and like boat trailers. I don't know, there, there's some, each state, varies, but most states are going to have to have a title on there. Uh, tractors do not have titles. All right. So you want to make sure it's free of any lien. So if you're buying it from the original owner, you know, like a John Deere or Kubota where they got 0% financing, make sure that it's paid off, that they have the paper proving that. Um, you can check with the state to see if there's any uh, record of lien or loan on, on file with them too. And the same thing can be said for skid steers. No, no titles for these guys either. So similar to the tractor, do your search that way. As far as maintenance goes, another consideration, I don't think any of these are a high maintenance uh, machine. You know, you do have a lot of, I guess, maintenance on the loader here, but it's simple maintenance, just greasing um, and, and the skid steer too. Normally about every 10 hours of loader use, you want to hit all those zerks with a grease gun, loop shuttle, say 5% with code GWT, but um, none of them are, are high maintenance. Probably as far as normal maintenance goes, the skid steer is, has the longest intervals in between like oil changes, for example. Um, however, if you have to start to get into repairs, well, these are also going to be the most expensive to repair. Just again, kind of getting back to that whole commercial construction grade piece of equipment. It's just heavier duty parts that are in here. As far as these guys here go, probably depends on the brand <laughs> that you go with. Um, some of those parts can and labor costs can, can vary quite a bit depending on, on what route you go, but that's a decision you'll have to make. Last one's a pretty big one as far as the diversity of jobs that these things can tackle. And you know, just by the nature of it, you're gonna have the, the fewest amount of jobs, not to mean that it can't do a lot, but the fewest amount of jobs that you can tackle um, with a four-wheeler of some kind. These two guys right here can do a heck of a lot of different stuff. You can get a, a backhoe right on the front of your skid steer if you want to, you can get a backhoe, of course, on, on your tractor too. You know, the loaders that they have on here just allow you to do whatever you want, you know, but you can move snow with any of these. You can grade a driveway with any of them. You can find attachments to, to work the ground if you need to uh, with these, if you want to plant a garden or a food plot, that kind of thing too. So, you know, a lot of the basics that you're going to do around your homestead, 
you, you can tackle with these. You know, you can move logs, right? You can either tow them behind on, on, a, on an ATV or you can put them in your grapple or you can tow them behind on, on your tractor too, whatever you want to do. I would probably really look at some of those well, it comes back to making a list. Look at your, your main jobs that you need to do and then kind of research it a bit to see if the tools are available and the capacity is available in whatever machine you want to go with. Because if you're doing a lot of really heavy log lifting and log moving around, then an ATV is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. And even a really small tractor might struggle with that. You might have to upsize your tractor, which could maybe put you in a closer wash or battle between these two machines here and so make that list you know add all this stuff up put it all on there and rank all of it because at the end of the day you're, you're going to have some paralysis by analysis and there's going to be shortcomings no matter which one you go with it could be price it could be uh, maneuverability it could be accessibility maybe it means that there's just a job or two you can't do and you're going to have to rent like a mini excavator for example to get a certain couple of jobs done and you can handle everything else with an atv for example you know but at the end of the day, get the one that checks the most boxes, that's highest up on that list there meeting the needs, and that's gonna be the right choice. So folks, no matter what one you choose, we'd love to help you out with some attachments, whether we sell them or we work with vendors that do and you get a discount, check out goodworkstractors.com. And 75% of you folks watching are not subscribed to our channel, but you do check in regularly. So hit that subscribe button down below and follow along, turn on the notifications. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.